Hi Dark Realmers, it's horror author and illustrator Michael J. Elliott here with you with another episode of the Dark Realm Diaries and this time we'll be doing our book and movie reviews. Okay Dark Realmers, because November's Thanksgiving I really wanted to try and tie this movie and book review uh, month up uh, with Thanksgiving, but um, it was really difficult because we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here in Australia. That's mainly because, uh, well, there weren't any Aussies on the Mayflower, and um, actually, come to think of it, um, I don't even think Australia was around then, but uh, happy Thanksgiving to all my American uh, and Canadian uh, friends and uh, readers. Uh, wherever you are. Now I did find something um, that um, you should be concerned about and be thankful for. Um, I don't know why you're all worried about a zombie apocalypse when this is just around the corner. See, be grateful you're not part of the turkey apocalypse, okay? Now, the first book I wanted to start off with uh, this month is um, one of my favourite authors who unfortunately passed away in 2013, and that's James Herbert. And you may remember I reviewed one of his books last month. Well, this is one of the very first uh, books I read when I started getting into the horror genre, and it is totally creepy. Now, rats have become a staple of the horror genre. Um, they tap into all our universal fears because they live in the dark, they're sly, um, they eat, um, you know, like uh, flesh. Um, so they, they've basically become very creepy and James Herbert tapped into this fear we have of them brilliantly. Now, the story concerns um, uh, a group of rats that um, are a new breed of rats. They're a cross between a black and a brown rat and they're a super ginormous rat. They are basically the size of a house cat. And if that wasn't frightening enough, they begin to infiltrate um, some London slums. And because they be, uh, become very intelligent and uh, very self-aware, they, they know that they can trap humans. And um, the thought of, you know, rats, um, gnawing away at a door to get to you is utterly frightening. Now this is one of uh, the best books James Herbert wrote. It was also one of his first. He went on to, to write two other books uh, uh, dealing with the rats because they became uh, the book became so popular. The second one was called Lair and that was about uh, the rats. Now they'd always, almost been totally wiped out by the humans in book one but a few survived and they scurried away and then they begin to infiltrate a conservation centre in the country and from there once again the horror builds up with the um, belief that no no there couldn't possibly be rats killing off all the um, wildlife and so forth and in the third book James Herbert ratchets it up another notch and he takes the, uh, the rats to a time where the, a nuclear war has, has wiped out most of humanity and they are struggling. Pockets of humanity are struggling and the rats see this as their perfect opportunity um, to not only get uh, some easy pickings in terms of food but also to become more dominant. Now um, if you've got uh, a mousetrap in your home at the moment um, I would not read this book uh, just yet. Wait till you've got rid of your pest problems but it is truly a really scary book. Um, wonderfully written. Um, yes there is some gore in it but you can't describe someone being killed by rats otherwise. Um, but James Herbert does this very deftly. He gradually builds up this uh, horror, this um, unknown entity that's stalking people. We know what's going on, but of course the characters don't. And that's what makes it so uh, fascinating and frightening. So I highly recommend that. That's still available in paperback and um, I'm sure it's available in ebook form too. So check it out and if you like that, I. Um, I do recommend you get the follow-ups, Lair and Domain. Now the next books I've got for you are by a friend of mine and a fellow indie author, Adam Reese. And um, I'm going to be reviewing the two books I've read uh, in his Triple D series. 
Now the best way to describe these novels by Adam Rees and Alexia Weiss is it's like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey with lots of blood. Lots and lots and lots of blood. It's very dark. Um, it contains violence, um, uh, sadomasochism scenes, murder, um, and very hardcore sex scenes. Now, so there's a warning just there for you, but it is brilliantly written. Um, Adam and Alexia never, never write just for the sake of writing. Everything, every dark act in these books uh, uh, further the plot and help us understand the main character. Now, the main character's name is Nathan. Now, he's a novelist and he writes that type of um, novel I've just described to you. And he's hugely successful. And what his readers don't understand is that his stories are actually uh, re-encounters of murders he's actually committed himself. Now, there's a reason he's like this, but I won't go into that because I don't believe in spoilers. But um, after committing a murder uh, of a prostitute, he heads to his country uh, uh, retreat uh, to get away from it all. But surprise, surprise, there's some uh, college kids next door and that's where it all happens. It's very dark, it's very gruesome, but um, as I said, uh, Adam and Alexia really get you into the mind of the character. Um, and despite the horrifying things he does, you don't get a you can't not like him. Now, I, I know that's hard to imagine, um, but uh, with this sort of character, they've brilliantly written him as he's, he's, he's a monster, yes, but there's a reason for him being a monster. Now, whether you agree, with uh, the way he's been portrayed, that's entirely up to you because it's subjective. But this book is very, very good. I found it darkly compelling. I found it chilling. And for me, as a horror author, anyone who can make me shiver and make my blood turn cold is definitely doing something right. So if you're into very, very dark horror, um, and I do warn you, it is dark, I would recommend this book very uh, thoroughly okay. Now the second in the uh, uh, Triple D series is called Deadly Demons and it arcs up the tension brilliantly. Um, we find at the end of this novel that um, Nathan now has uh, an accomplice or a protege if you want, um, a woman called Adriana who's fascinated with him and isn't above killing herself. Now, this book follows on from the previous book uh, almost immediately. Um, now, Adriana has actually um, assisted Nathan in his last killings, and she's fascinated with him. It, it's somehow she's sort of in love with him, and Nathan begins questioning whether he could actually have a relationship with someone who is like him. So there's a lot of psychological insight into Nathan in this novel. And basically it revolves them um, on the run uh, from their uh, last uh, set of murders. And there is more murder and there is more gore and lots more sex in this. Um, but we're starting to slowly discover more and more about Nathan. We're introduced to uh, some backstory about what happened to him when he was 15 years old and why he developed a taste for sadomasochism and murder and so forth. And it's all coming to a, a climax. And basically in this novel, uh, Nathan and Adriana um, go to uh, some uh, friends uh, that can that can help basically uh, Nathan in his uh, attempts to uh, hide or uh, you know stay under the radar basically um, but there are characters from his past who are determined not to let him go um, now Despite some previous murders in his younger days where he wasn't actually proven as the murderer, some people are convinced. And this is where a lot of the storyline comes in, where characters from his past um, attempt to put an end to Nathan. 
and this is a brilliant follow-up. Um, Adam and Alexia have not let the pace down. Um, there's just that same amount of um, arc of tension and of uh, build-up. Uh, you sit there and you wait. You know when someone's introduced, look, they're going to be a victim or they're either going to participate. One of the two, there's no in-between with these writers and it's fascinating. Um, if you've thoroughly enjoyed the first book, you will love this one. I'm really, really looking forward to reading the third in the series, um, which I'll get around to soon, and I'll review that again um, in an upcoming Dark Realm Diaries book and movie or trivia. trivia. But um, I encourage you to check that one out, um, and um, you'll find it darkly fascinating. Okay, Dark Realmers, let's change the pace slightly now with something that's uh, a lot more genteel, a lot more pleasant, um, but just as creepy and horrifying. And it's by an author I know very, very well, Christy Stratos. And Christy happens to be my editor. And I'll point out right now, I'm not being paid to review her work. I'm not uh, getting free editing, anything like that. Christy is not only a great editor, but she's a fascinating writer. And the book we're going to be looking at is her uh, first novel, Anatomy of a Darkened Heart. Christy has created a brilliant, dark and eerie Victoriana novel. And the story basically involves Abigail, who uh, once she's been born, she's basically rejected by her mother. And her father tends to be a little bit uh, indifferent to her. Now, growing up like that, when her siblings come along, there's jealousy um, and there's things Abigail does, very subtle things that um, make you wonder about her and her motivations. Now, um, when her mother dies, and I won't tell you how she dies, but uh, it does involve Abigail, um, she ba and her father then uh, leaves the house uh, to take up with his mistress, she becomes the head of the household and slowly but surely she begins laying plans and um, crafting um, ideas that uh, will entwine her siblings and um, enforce or, or reinforce her power within the household. It's very, very atmospheric. It's very, you can almost feel yourself in, in the house, um, going up those darkened stairs and wondering about what's being uh, on the other side of the door when the key turns. Christy is brilliant at doing that. Now, I was very much reminded um, that this is sort of like in the um, same terms, if any of you have read the brilliant um, Turn of the Screw by Henry James, um, uh, about a governess who's uh, apparently, her charges are, are haunted uh, by the ghosts of uh, the former employees. It's very much in that field where it's very subtle. Um, the build up, um, little things happen, but it builds up and builds up until we're given a brilliant ending, absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm really pleased that um, Christy is actually going to be continuing on this series um, and some of the characters um, that are, are minor characters that briefly appear will actually be uh, contained within their own books and their story will sort of um, flesh out uh, what's happened here in um, Anatomy of a Darkened Heart. And the best way I can possibly describe it, it's it's a little bit like when one of your favourite TV series gets its own spin-off and you're really happy. And um, so uh, her next book in the series will be called Lock and Key. And uh, that's very clever because it relates uh, to an incident within Anatomy of a Darkened Heart that you'll just love. So I thoroughly recommend this. Um, it's very genteel. It's very uh, wonderfully Victorian. Um, Christy has done a brilliant job of research into the traditions, the customs, the dress, everything about um, Victorian Americana. 
and uh, so I do encourage you this and I'm certainly looking forward to the next in the series which as you know that will be one of my uh, uh, other reviews in uh, the Dark Realm Diaries so do yourself a favor and check that one out it's available uh, through Amazon in ebook form but also in paperback okay and other major retailers Okay, Dark Realmers, we're going to finish off this book and movie review with some visual horror. And I'm going to be recommending a movie I saw which was utterly thrilling. It was a great chiller, had a lot of twists and turns, and I'm referring to the movie Horn. Okay, this movie involves a young girl who wakes up every morning to find everything in the house exactly the same. The family are having the same discussions, they're sitting down to the same breakfast, and she's wondering why she's the only one who can't see this. It's a little bit, uh, that is a little bit like Groundhog Day, but believe me, it's no comedy. And I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to be spoiling anything if I tell you that uh, this character discovers that she's actually dead, her whole family are dead, and that's not the end of the story. There is much, much more to this than um, just what I've given away there. <clears throat> Basically, uh, she begins um, to connect with um, other people, so she's is sort of haunting other people, or trying to communicate with uh, what she believes are the uh, the living um, that are, have, are in her house. Now there is some twists and turns in this that will have you going, oh my god, I didn't think that was going to happen. It certainly impressed me. Um, I thought, how, you know, how can they, you know, how, how can this movie go further? You know, we, we've just found out she's dead. Um, so, so what more? How can it build itself up? But believe me, it does. Uh, it's not gory. It's not. Um, uh, there's no blood. There's no gratuitous um, murders. Anything like that. Um, but there is that chill factor. There is that horror um, as we go on the journey with this girl and discover what she learns. Okay, and uh, where she is and what's been happening. It's a brilliant movie. Now, I saw it on Netflix here in Australia. Now, if it's available here in Australia, I'm almost certain it will be available on Netflix in your part of the world, but it is also available on DVD. So, uh, if you want to and you're looking for a good atmospheric chill that will have you trying to guess the ending or guess what's coming next, I thoroughly recommend Haunter, okay? Okay, Dark Realmers, that's it for this November and Stroke uh, Thanksgiving book and uh, movie review. Um, even though we don't, as I said, celebrate uh, Thanksgiving here, I'd just like to say I'm very thankful to all my readers and to all you people there who take the time to watch the Dark Realm Diaries, leave comments and of course subscribe. You are all awesome. Okay, so until next time I'll just leave you with um, a little Thanksgiving uh, greeting and I'll see you all very soon. Now I upload content to the Dark Realm Diaries every Friday. Now that's Friday Australian time. So for people in the Northern Hemisphere, that's your Thursday, okay? So I'll see you again very soon. And once again, to all my American and Canadian friends, I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving. Bye for now.